Sabbath peace. There's another opportunity for us to hear and learn that a word of truth that is given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. If you hear a whooping in the background, that is just regular business. Where was I? <laughs> we, might have, we might have to add that in, right? <laughs> it was every week is a whooping going on. We might have to add that thing in. Uh, in him lies the only hope for salva salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, somebody had them kid turn down that darn TV. Uh, if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching in on the camera, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Why is that TV still up? You know what I'm saying? He don't know how to use no darn technology. He probably over there. Mm -hmm, I don't know. Maybe turn on the side. Is the TV downstairs making all that noise? Alright, well, I don't know. Gotta fill in some time. Yeah, I thought that was the one back there. All right, well, I guess we'll just sit here and talk a little bit before, you know, everything goes. Uh, what's going on in the news or something? Donald Trump? Government shutdown? Government back open, right? You know? I do need to file some taxes. Nope. Mama, go look online. They're supposed to send it in the mail. Are you, you ready now? Yeah. Oh, okay. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 8, verse uh, 20, verse 16. This is Isaiah chapter 8, verse 16. Sixteen. Bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples, mm -hmm. and I will wait upon the Lord that hides his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. Mm -hmm. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts, which dwells in Mount Zion. Mm -hmm. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter. But should not a people seek unto their God? Shouldn't the people seek unto their God? For Let's the hear about to the dead. Uh huh. To the law and the testimony. He said, To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. All right? That's why we go back and we look at the history. That's why we started off in the law talking about Genesis, then talking about Exodus, and we um, read a little bit in uh, Leviticus and Numbers. Got through De Deuteronomy, then we went on to Joshua, and then we said, you know, without the Joshua, we might as well go to Judges. We looked at Judges, then went to Ruth, and now we're in Samuel, all right? It's important for us to know the book because we need to know exactly what people need to line up with. People get to talk to us, and we don't know the book. We're not familiar with the actual message or the actual testimony of what the Most High God is saying. Then when he talk, these people talk to us, and they try to, they try to present us information. 
we go with whatever, whatever they say. But if we read it right out of the book and we try to understand it according to what the book says, then that gives us a, a, a situation where now we have something to compare to speech, right? Now I can take what you tell me and I can look at it and I can say, okay, you know what? That's exactly what I heard. That's exactly what I read. That's exactly like, that's exactly, that's exactly what I'm expecting to hear from God, right? I know who God is. You say something to me, it has to line up with what I already know, right? Or it has to, you have to teach me something and what you teach me has to line up with what I already know. Right? So it's just about constantly building on the knowledge that the Most High God gives us. And the only way we get that is to get the understanding from what the book says. Whether it's by reading the book or whether it's by learning from somebody who read the book. Either way, we have to get the understanding from what the book says. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and go to 1 Samuel chapter 9. So last week we left off with um, 1 Samuel chapter 8. Uh, Samuel, remember, Samuel was a man, uh, was a, was a, was a, uh, well actually he wasn't born yet, right? So he, he came from a woman who was barren, couldn't have children. She prayed to God. She said, I dedicate my son to, I dedicate my child to you. If, uh, if you give me a child, most high God gave her a child. She weaned the boy and then ended up dedicating him to the priest. All right. So then Samuel, that son that was dedicated, ended up growing up amongst the priests. That same priest had two sons. He, his two sons were wicked. The most high God punished his wicked sons and him because of their wickedness. The people were, were, were not trusting of their leaders because of that. Samuel grows up. Samuel has two sons. He becomes a prophet. He's precious amongst the people because he's a prophet. He has the word of God that was special to the people. They were not used to that because the word of God was hidden in that time. All right? So he spoke to the people, but he had these two sons. He's starting to get old. They like, listen, don't leave this thing to your sons. We've seen that story play out before. All y'all going to darn die. So he said, you know what? Let's try something different. All right, they said, we want a king. So that's where we left off. The people asked for the king. Samuel gave them advice, like, listen, you know what I'm saying? You asked for a king. Most of God said, I'll do it for you. But if I give you the king, this is what he's going to do. He's going he gonna to start lighting your butt up, right? If I give you the king, he's going to light you up, right? He's going to change. He's going to take your daughters. You know, he's going to take your, uh, your sons, have them running in front of the carriage, you know what I'm saying, like they darn horses. He said, he gonna, you know what I'm saying, it's going to be rough for your people, all right? So that's where we left off. Let's try to pick it up from there and see what we got. This is uh, 1 Samuel chapter 9. Give me verse, we're going to start at verse 1. Let's do verse 15. We might have a lot. To, I'm trying to get through as much of Samuel as possible. You know, I'm trying to get to David. This is uh, 1 Samuel chapter 15. Give me verse, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 9. Give me verse 15. Now the Lord had told Samuel in his ear a day before Saul came saying, Tomorrow about this time I will send thee a man out of the land of Benjamin. And you shall anoint him to be captain over my people Israel, that he may save my people out of the hand of the Philistines. For I've looked upon my people because their cry has come up unto me. And when Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said unto him, Behold, the man whom I spake, of, spake to thee of, uh, the same shall reign over my people. And then Saul drew near to Samuel in the gate and said, Tell me, I pray thee, where's the seer's house is? Where the seer's house is? Mm -hmm. And Samuel answered Saul and said, I am the seer. Go up before me unto the high place. Notice he you. says seer. What is a seer? What does that mean? A prophet. All right, he said, oh, that's a prophet. Somebody who can see, right? Somebody who can, you know what I'm saying? I can see past what, what everybody else is seeing, right? I can see, you know what I'm saying, out of the future that the Most High God let me see. Or I can see, you know what I'm saying, alternatives that, that the Most High God might, might let me see. All right, so he said he's a seer. So that's what the people called it back in our day, you know what I'm saying? That's what the people used to call them, seers. Go ahead. For ye shall eat with me today, and tomorrow I will let you go, and will tell you all that is in your heart. Uh -huh. And as for the donkeys that were lost three days ago, set not your mind on them, for they are found. And on whom is so all he's a the prophet. of Israel. So as a seer, as a prophet, he's able to see that. He's like, oh, don't even worry about it. They came out to so the story where they had coming out. The only reason Saul was out there because he was looking for the lost donkeys, his lost donkeys from his, uh, from his pops. So he's like, okay, let me chase after him. They had gone so long that he was looking like, you know what? It's it's better off for me to go home, going back home, because he said, he said, Pop's gonna stop worrying about the donkeys, and now he's gonna start worrying about us. Right? So he is about to go home. But his friend was like, you know what? Hold on. Let's go see what the seer is talking about first. So they went to go see the seer. So then, as a seer, as a prophet, he knows y'all actually looking for the donkey. So he's like, listen, most high God told me that you were gonna come, right? You gonna end up being the king. So let me holler at him. And then after that, let me let you know, you worry about donkeys, don't worry about it. They already been found. He could see that as a prophet, right? And that's what his friend that was with him, that's what he told me. He's like, look, we need to go see the seer. 
God don't let none of his words fall to the ground. In other words, everything that man speak, that thing come to pass. Right? So he knew that's the one we need to go see, and that's who they went to go see. So they went to him for a specific reason. Samuel's telling them about something totally different. But at the end of the day, what's on their mind? On their mind, they looking like, all right, we still need these donkeys, though. Come up, my pop's going to kill me. Right? So then he went up, and he's like, okay, at the end of the day, don't worry about the donkeys. Them things are already found. Right? What verse we on? Uh, 20. Keep going. Set not your mind on them, for they are found, and on whom is all the desire of Israel. Right? So he asked him. This is Samuel asking Saul. Right? So Saul, the young boy, you know what I'm saying? It's going to describe him in a little bit. But Saul, the young boy, he's like, he's like, on whom is all the eyes of all of Israel? Like, everybody wants you. Like, you the man out here in these streets. But from Saul's point of view, look, watch what Saul said. Is it not on thee in all your father's house? Mm -hmm. And Saul answered and said, Am I not a Benjaminite of the Benjamite of the smallest of the tribes of Israel? Mm -hmm. And my family the least of the families of the tribe of Benjamin. Why then do you speak to me? Why then do you speak so to me? Uh huh. So he's looking like, am I not the smallest? Like, do you know how small Benjamin? And why would Benjamin be small? Because they uh, with, uh, after what they did to the man from Bethlehem. That's right. From Bethlehem, they killed them all. We just them. read it, right? We just read that in, in, in Judges. They killed all the Benjamites almost, right? They felt so bad about them. They're like, man, we got to get these boys some wives. You know what I'm saying? So they can multiply out here in these streets. So the Benjamites had to be already at a disadvantage. So he's like, man, I'm not only am I of the smallest tribe, my family ain't nothing. You know what I'm saying? We ain't nobody of rapport. You know what I'm saying? Don't nobody care nothing about us. He's like, why would it be me? Even amongst my father's house, I ain't nobody. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, why would, you, why would it be me? Why should it keep going? Samuel took Saul and his servant and brought them into the parlor mm -hmm. and made them sit in the chiefest place among them that were bidden, which were about 30 persons. Right? So now he put him, he put him, him being, him being uh, humble, Saul being humble and like, you know what I'm saying? I ain't nobody. Where did, where did Saul sit him down? I mean, where did Samuel put, sit him down? He sit him in the best seat. Right? That reminds us of who? Y'all sure. Y'all sure. All right? He said, man, don't walk in there talking about, you know what I'm saying? I'm the man. Go ahead and give me that seat. Somebody mess around and tell you, you know what I'm saying? Nah, you ain't supposed to sit there. That's somebody else. He said, nah, you sit in the lower seat and let somebody come up to you and be like, nah, I'll move up. You know what I'm saying? That's exactly what Saul did. Right? Let's grab, uh, let's grab uh, Samuel uh, 10. Jump over to 10 verse 1. Then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said, Is it not because the Lord has anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? All right, so he poured oil over his head. That's what they call anointed. All right, anointed just means, you know what I'm saying, to pour out. You know what I'm saying? So he poured the oil all over him. You know what I'm saying? And he anointed him with oil. All right, that was a, huh? Or to cover. Yeah, that's that's what uh, he covered him in oil. So, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, that, that's, that was customary for, for our kings. You know what I'm saying? When you have a king getting set up that was that was put in place by the Most High God, that was customary. You would come in, we'd pour the oil on him. You know what I'm saying? Some man of God or some leader would pour oil on him, and then that would indicate that he's he's the chosen one from the Most High God. Keep going. When you are departed from me today, then you shall find two men by Rachel's sepulcher in the border of Benjamin at Zila, uh -huh. Zelza, and they will say unto you, the donkeys which you were. Where it went to seek our found. Mm -hmm. And look, your father has left the care of the donkeys and sorroweth for your for you, saying, What shall I do for my son? Mm -hmm. Then shall you go on forward from there, and you shall come to the plain of Tabor, and there shall meet you three men going up to God to Bethel. So watch what he tells them. He's like, Look, this is all he tells me everything that's gonna happen. You going he just laying it out for him. He said, Then you're gonna run into three men. What else? And one carrying three kids, and another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a bottle of wine. Okay. And they will salute you and give you two loaves of bread, which you shall receive of their hands. Uh-huh. After that, you shall come to the hill of God, where is the garrison of the Philistines, and it shall come to pass, when you are come there to the city, you shall meet a, co a company of prophets coming down from the high place with a psaltery, uh -huh. and a tabret, and a pipe, and a harp before them, and they shall prophesy. Okay. 
and the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and you shall prophesy with them, and shall be turned into another man. Right? So he said, you're going to mess around and prophesy with them, and you're going to be turned into what? Another man. I mean, when we, you know what I'm saying, when we when we enter into Yahushua, what happens to us? Oh, boy, yeah. We become born again. We become another man. We become new, the book says. Right? We got to become new. Right? Keep going well. And let it be, when these signs are come upon thee, that you do as occasion serve thee. Mm -hmm. That you do as occasion serve thee. For God is with thee. And you shall go down before me to Gilgal, and behold, I will come down unto you to offer burnt offerings and the sacrifice, uh, sacrifices of peace offerings seven days, and you shall tarry till I come to you and show you what you shall do. Right? So now he already he already laying out everything for him. He said, these are all the things that's going to happen to you. You're going to run into this person, and they're going to have this. You're going to run into these prophets, and you're going to be turned to a new man. So he laid out his whole day for him. This is everything that's going to happen. And at the end of it, he gave him instruction. After that, I want you to take your butt to Gilgal. After you go to Gilgal, I want you to wait there. And read that part again. What exactly did he say? I will come down unto thee to offer burnt offerings and to sacrifice sacrifices of peace offerings. Uh-huh. Seven days shall you tarry till he I come. He said, how many days? Seven days. And then right after that, he said, what? Shall you tarry until I come. Until I what? Until I come. So that's specific instruction. Seven days you're going to wait until I come. You're going to wait there until I come now. Right? Keep going. And tell you what you shall do. Uh huh. And it was so that when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, God gave him another heart. And all those God did what now? Gave him another heart. What that sound like? A new heart. Right? That's part of the new covenant, right? Ain't that what? It, ain't that Yah's promise to us? He said, "I will give you a new heart." Right? I'll take your heart of stone and make it a heart of flesh. Is what he said. All right. Let's keep going. And when they came there to the hill, behold, a company of prophets met him. And the Spirit of God came upon him, and he prophesied among them. And he prophesied. So this man became a new man. He had a new heart. The Spirit of God was on him. And the man ended up prophesying. Right? These are all four signs of a, of a, of a believer. These four signs of the Spirit is actually working in the man. Right? But what's interesting is, as we continue to read, a lot of other things are going to be revealed to it. But before we do, let's check out uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. It's 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Give me verse 20. It's 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 1, verse 20. You gonna do me a favor? Go give me like two waters. You know what I'm saying? So like if you go, it's a pantry. You know what the pantry is, right? Mm -hmm. Open up that pantry at the bottom, grab two waters. For all the promise of, promises of God in him are yea. And in him, amen, unto the glory of God. Talking about Yahweh Shua. Keep going. By us. Now, he which establishes us with you and the Messiah has anointed us in God. Uh -huh. Who has also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Mm -hmm. Moreover, I call God for a record upon my soul that to spare you, I come not as yet unto Corinth. Mm -hmm. Not for that we have dominion over your faith, but are helpers of your joy. For by faith you stand. That's all Grab a girl. Go back. Go back. Come on, or maybe I missed it. Go ahead. Like two verses. What verses up? Give me like what you on? Twenty three, twenty four, twenty five. Give me twenty two. There's no more water. He has also right. sealed us and given the earnest of. The oh, okay, that's no water. He said he sealed us and did what now? Give us the earnest spirit in our hearts. Right? He said he give, he's given us the earnest spirit in our hearts. Right? That's what happened with Saul. The spirit of God landed on the man. Right? After the spirit of God landed on him, then that puts him in a place where he can say, you know what? All right. Right? I've, I've been sealed now. Right? And that's the same thing the Most High God promised us in the New Testament. 
It's important that we know that because now we can look at examples, right? We can look at somebody in the book who went through all the experiences of God promises, right? The things that God said, these are signs that you made it. You know what I'm saying? These are signs that you the one, right? He went through all those things. And then let's see what happened at the latter end of his life. This is, uh, this is uh, 1 Samuel chapter 11. First Samuel chapter 11, give me verse 5. And behold, Saul came after the herd out of the field. Mm -hmm. And Saul said, What aileth the people that they weep? Mm -hmm. And they told him the tidings of the men of Jabesh. And the Spirit of God came upon Saul when he heard those things, and his anger was kindled greatly. All right, so you see the Spirit of God came on him again. And then his anger ended up being uh, kindled. And it said greatly his anger, anger was kindled. So now he's trying to scrap. Right? Because right now the reason why, you know what I'm saying, the reason why this is happening is because they, they're about to go to war. These people, you know what I'm saying, trying to oppress them. So they're trying to oppress our people. Saul here by it. Remember, he already got the spirit and he a prophet now. So he's a new man. So he heard about that. Spirit of God landed on him. He became angry. Watch what he do next. And the Spirit of God came upon Saul when he heard those tidings, and his anger was kindled greatly. Mm -hmm. And he took a yoke of oxen and hewn them in pieces and sent them throughout all the coast of Israel by the hands of messengers, saying, Watch what he said to him. Whosoever comes not forth after Saul and after Samuel, so shall it be done unto his oxen. Right? So he said, I'm going to chop your darn oxen up. Right? He said, whoever don't come out here and help us fight against these people, your whole, all your oxen are going to be chopped up. Right? That's our livelihood at that point. Right? So watch what the people did. Let's see if the people were just like, oh, well, no, nah, we ain't messing with that then. Watch this. And the fear of the Lord fell upon the people, and they came out with one consent. They came out with what? One consent. Everybody came out together. Everybody surrounded Saul. They said, you know what? This is a man we can follow. Right? So everybody surrounded Saul, and then what else happened? And when he numbered them in Bezek, the children of Israel were 300,000, and the men of Judah, 30,000. Jump on down to verse, uh, like, 14. Then said Samuel to the people, come, and let us go to Gilgal and renew the kingdom there. And do what? Renew the kingdom there. And then what are we going to do? And all the people went to Gilgal, and there they made Saul king before the Lord in Gilgal. And there they sacrificed sacrifices of peace offerings before the Lord. And there Saul and all the men of Israel rejoiced greatly. All right? So at that point, that's when they made him king. All right? They made him king. All right? So now it became official. Jump on down or jump over to uh, chapter 12. Watch this. Verse 1. I'm trying to figure out. We drank up all my water. Who water is that over there? I think it might be mine. And Samuel said unto all Israel, Behold, I have hearkened unto your voice and all that you have said unto me, mm -hmm. and have made a king over you. All right, so Samuel said, I did my part. Y'all asked me for a king. You know what I'm saying? I did my part. Watch Samuel clear himself. And now behold, the young, and now behold, the king walks before you, and I am old and gray headed, and behold, my sons are with you, mm -hmm. and I have walked before you from my childhood unto this day. Mm -hmm. Behold, here I am, a witness against me before the Lord and before his anointed. Mm -hmm. Whose ox have I taken? He said, whose ox have I stolen? Or whose donkey have I taken? Uh-huh. He said, I ain't stole nobody's donkey. Or whom I've defrauded. Right? I said, I ain't lied to nobody. Let's hear about it. Whom have I oppressed? Mm-hmm. Or of whose hand have I received any bribe to blind my eyes therewith? He said, I ain't took no bribes, nothing. He said, I'm blameless. He's trying to let them know. All right? Y'all have four king. Y'all trying to replace me. I get it. You know what I'm saying? But let, let the record show I ain't did nothing wrong to y'all. Right, let's hear about it. And I will restore it to you. Uh-huh. And they said, you have not defrauded us nor oppressed us, neither have you taken aught of any man's hand. All right, keep and, going. And he said unto them, the Lord is witness against you and his anointed is witness this day that you have not found aught in my hand. And they answered, he is a witness. Mm -hmm. And Samuel said unto the people, it is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron and brought your fathers up out of the land of Egypt. That's right. Well, now, go to, uh, go jump down like verse 13. Maybe verse 12. No, 13. Give me 13. Let's see what 13 talking about. 
Now therefore, behold, the king whom you have chosen and whom you have desired, and behold, the Lord has set a king over you. Uh -huh. If you will fear the Lord and serve him and obey his voice and not rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then shall both you and the king that reigns over you continue following the Lord your God. Uh -huh. But if you will not obey the voice of the Lord your God, but rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then shall the hand of the Lord be against you as it was against your fathers. Now therefore, stand and see this great thing which the Lord will do before your eyes. Mm -hmm. Is it not wheat harvest today? I will call unto the Lord, and he shall send thunder and rain that ye may proceed. Right? He said, it's not even the time of year for thunder and rain. But he said, I'm going I'm to call unto the Lord, and he's going to show you thunder and rain. Just so you see. And what else happened? That you may perceive and see that your wickedness is great. Uh-huh. Which ye have done in the sight of the Lord in asking for a king. Right? He said, this is wicked what y'all doing. Let me prove it to you. Right? It ain't even time of the year to have thunder and rain. Watch what's about to happen. Let's hear about it. So Samuel called unto the Lord, and the Lord sent thunder and rain that day. Uh -huh. And all the people greatly feared, and the Lord feared the Lord and Samuel. Mm -hmm. And all the people said unto Samuel, Pray for your servants unto the Lord your God, mm -hmm. that we die not. For we have added unto all our sins this evil to ask us a king. Mm -hmm. And Samuel said unto the people, Fear not. Ye have done all this wickedness, yet turn not aside from following the Lord. He said, Just obey. Like you did it for sure, but just obey. That got to be our, our attitude. A lot of times, a lot of times people, you know, they look and they start looking for like, you know what I'm saying, pity. You know what I'm saying, looking for somebody to feel sorry for them and all that. Attitude, you know what I'm saying, like you almost seem rude to some people. You know what I'm saying, you get talking to them, they like, you know what I'm saying, like what do I do? How do I, how do I get past it? And you be like, I know, just stop sinning. You know what I'm saying, like, ah, yeah, yeah. Because they want to feel, they want to like, they want to kind of like glory in like what happened. You know what I'm saying, like, oh. Well, this happened and I just feel so bad and they like beat themselves up about it and all that. But at the end of the day, what you got to do? Get back. God is like, I was telling somebody the other day, you can have all the pain in the world, right? But you can make it past. Like you can go right into the kingdom feeling all that pain. Not forgiving yourself. Like you did something terrible and just like, I just never forgave myself for it. You can get into the kingdom not forgiving yourself. What you can't get into the kingdom doing is sin. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just... Get past it. Go. Move. You know what I'm saying? Turn from sin. And that's the same thing he was telling the people. Right? The people were looking like, oh, man, this sin, we added, no, we terrible. We already been sinners. And on top of that, we added this extra sin onto it. He was like, yeah, okay, for sure. Just don't turn from turning, them, uh, don't, don't turn from following the most high God. Like, forget all the other stuff y'all talking about. Who cares? That's already happened. Just from now on, obey the man. You do that, you'll be all right. Right? Jump over to 13. Give me verse 7. It's 1 Samuel chapter 13. Give me verse 7. Let's see if we can open up some book real quick. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about, Eli? Yeah. Oh. When are you going to teach my son to use the pot? That's your cousin. You're supposed to be looking out for him. When are you going to teach him to use the pot? Go teach him. Go teach the guy. Go tell the guy go use the pot. Show him how to use it. Show him how you do it. You know what I mean? Supposed to hook him up. No. All right, whatever then. And some of the Hebrews went over Jordan to the land of Gad and Gilead. Mm -hmm. As for Saul, he was yet in Gilgal, and all the people followed him trembling. Mm -hmm. And he tarried seven days, according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. That's what Samuel said to him. He said, "Wait there seven days, right? According to the set time that Samuel appointed." Okay. But Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. Right? So it's on the seventh day, and they looking like, where's Samuel at? Right? And the people were scattering. Everybody's starting to get scared, because this is about to be war time. Right? Everybody, it's, it's about time to go to war. Right? Let's keep going. And Saul said, bring me here a burnt offering to me and peace offerings. Why do you think Saul had to do that in his mind? Samuel ain't show up. Right? All the people, who did they respect? Samuel. All the people respected Samuel. Samuel said, everything going to be all right. Let me show you how it's going to be all right. You go to Gilgal, wait seven days. When I show up, we're going to make a sacrifice, and then we're going to win this war. So that's what all the people are looking at like, well, we know when Samuel said it, that thing going to happen. So when Samuel, when it looked like it's go time and Samuel's not showing up, everybody else started getting scared. Right? They're like, oh, man, something happened. We misinterpreted something. Something, something going on. I don't know what's about to happen. It's about to get bad. So now Saul feel like I have to fix this. The only thing I can do is I can make a sacrifice like Samuel said 
And then perhaps that'll make all the people look and say, okay, what Samuel said is still happening. You know what I'm saying? So he said, okay, no time to wait. War's about to go. People are starting to get, you know what I'm saying? People starting to get lost. They started to run all the around. Let's bring everybody back together. Let's make this sacrifice. Let's see what Saul did. And it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came. Mm -hmm. And Saul went out to meet him that he might salute him. Mm -hmm. And Samuel said, what have you done? Right? Samuel like, oh boy, what have you done? Right? Keep going. And Saul said, because I saw the people were scattered from me, and that you came not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Michmash, mm -hmm. therefore said I, the Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication unto the Lord. Right? So what he's looking at, he's looking like the people were starting to scatter. The Philistines is on their way. If the people scatter, Philistines on their way. That equals me getting my butt kicked. He like, the only thing I could do since you didn't come in the time that we expected you is make the sacrifice. That brings the people back together. Now we can fight. Made logical sense to him, right? Let's see. Keep going. I forced myself, therefore, and offered a burnt offering. Mm -hmm. And Samuel said to Saul, you have done foolishly. Mm -hmm. You have not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. Mm -hmm. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. Mm -hmm. But now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought him a man after his own heart, and the Lord has commanded him to be captain over his people, because you have not kept that which the Lord commanded you. So everything that we just saw from Samuel, I mean from uh, Saul, all the signs we saw, how he became a new man, how he had a new heart, how the spirit landed on him, how he prophesied to the Most High God. All these different things right out the window as soon as he committed sin. Right? As soon as he sinned, all that stuff don't even matter anymore to the Most High God. Because the way the Most High God works is he's looking at what right now, what state are you in? Are you a sinner or not? You turn away from sin? I'm not looking at your past. I'm not looking at, oh, look at all the sins that you committed. I'm saying turn away from sin. Okay, you good in my book. If you continue to sin, I'm not looking at all the righteousness you did in your past. Guess what I'm looking at? I'm looking at it right now, right? That's our. That has to be our mind. Mind has to be okay in the future. Boom. What I'm moving towards? Never sinning again. Never sinning again. Never sinning again. And keep moving. You make a mistake. Okay, good. Fine. Pass it. Keep going. Don't beat yourself up. Move. You know what I'm saying? Never sinning again. You gotta fix it, right? The only way to get past. Go to uh uh. What do I want? Give me Micah six. This is Micah chapter 6. Give me verse 1. Uh, Jake, you know what I'm saying? Get this water right here. I don't know who water is. Here. That thing might be a prank, though. You know what I'm saying? I thirst. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I mean? Good gracious. I'm trying to say I'm the only one who ain't got no darn water. Somebody be like, they spiked this water or something. What's wrong? Micah chapter 6, verse 1. Yeah. Hear ye now what the Lord has said. Arise, contend thou before the mountains, and let the hills hear thy voice. Mm -hmm. Hear ye, O mountains, the Lord's controversy, and ye strong foundations of the earth. Mm -hmm. For the Lord has a controversy with his people, and he will plead with Israel. Mm -hmm. O my people, what have I done unto thee? And where have I weary, wearied thee? Testify against me. Mm -hmm. For I brought you up out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of servants. And I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. Mm -hmm. O oh, my people, remember now what Balak, the king of Moab, consulted and with Balaam, the son of Beor, answered him. Mm -hmm. From Shittim unto Gilgal, that ye may know the righteousness of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Wherewith shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings? With he said, shall I come before him with what? Burnt offerings? Uh-huh. With calves of a year old? Uh-huh. With the Lord, will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or ten thousands of rivers of oil? Right? So that's what Saul tried to do. Saul was looking like, all right, well, listen. At least I can do it to make this sacrifice of God. Maybe we can win this war. So he came to him with all that. And he started making this sacrifice. What happened, though? What's the, the most high God feel so about I it? I gave my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body, for the sin of my soul. <coughs> he has showed thee, O man, what is good. He said, I showed you what's good. 
And what does the Lord require of you? Uh huh. But to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly, humbly with thy God. Just do what he say. It ain't all that deep. Right? At the end of the day, just do what he say. That's all he's looking for. Right? Grab uh grab Matthew chapter 9. In Matthew chapter 9, give me verse 10. In Matthew chapter 9, give me verse 10. And it came to pass, as Yahshua sat at meat in the house, behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. Mm -hmm. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, unto his disciples, why, eat, why does your master eat with publicans and sinners? Mm -hmm. But when y'all sure heard that, he said unto them, They that behold need not a physician, but they that are sick. Mm -hmm. But you go and learn what that means. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Uh -huh. For I am not call, I am not come to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. Right? That's letting us know, man. It's always a chance for us. Right? Always a chance. You make a mistake, you do that as long as you're breathing. He, he, he there for you. He there. He trying to call the sinners to repentance, not the righteous. Right? A righteous man don't need to repent. A righteous man already there. We good. You know what I'm saying? It's when it comes to the sinners, right? He come, he there to call the sinners to repentance. Always a chance. Uh, let's jump on back to Samuel. It's 1 Samuel. Let's jump over to 15. 1 Samuel chapter 15. 1 Samuel 15. Let's do... Uh, 1 Samuel 15, verse 1. Is that verse 1? Yeah. Samuel also said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint you to be king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore, listen unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Mm -hmm. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have, and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, mm -hmm. infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. Mm -hmm. And Saul gathered the people together and numbered them in Tel Telaim, 200,000 footmen and 10,000 men of Judah. And Saul came to a city of Amalek and laid wait in the valley. And Saul said unto the Kenites, Go, depart, get down from among the Amalekites, mm -hmm. unless I destroy you with them. For you showed kindness to all the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. So the Kenites departed from among the Amalekites. And Saul smote the Amalekites from Havilah unto the, until you come up unto Shur, Shur, that is over against Egypt. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive, and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. Uh -huh. But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep and of the oxen and the fatlings and the lambs and all that was good. It would not utterly destroy them, but everything that was vile and refuse, that they destroyed utterly. Mm -hmm. Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repents me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he has turned back from following me and has not performed my commandments. Mm -hmm. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. Mm -hmm. And when Samuel rolled early, early to meet Saul in the morning, it was told Samuel, saying, Saul comes, Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he set him up a place, and it has gone about, and passed on, and gone down to Gilgal. Mm -hmm. And Samuel came to Saul, and said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord, I have performed the commandment of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And Samuel said, What means what means then this bleeding of the sheep in my ears? Right. And the lowing of the oxen which I hear. Right. He's looking at him like, I thought the commandment of the Lord was to kill all the animals. Was to kill everything. I still hear some animals. It seems like y'all stole the animals if you ask me. Since you talking about, I mean, you talking about you did all the commandment of the Lord. I'm trying to figure out, okay, well, what does it mean when I hear all these sheep? Y'all didn't come with the sheep. Right? Let's hear it to it. Let's see. And Saul said, They have brought them from the Amalekites, for the people spared the best of the sheep and the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord our God, and the rest we have utterly destroyed. You see that? He said his, his reason was, we got the sheep. You know what we want to do? We want to sacrifice them to God. We just got real done reading Micah, right? Micah just told us, I don't want to sacrifice, but I want you to do it to do what I say. Right? I want you to do what I say. What verse is that? Uh, 15. 15. Keep going. 
Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, and I will tell you what the Lord has said to me this night. Mm -hmm. And he said unto him, Say on. And Samuel said, When you was little in your own sight, were you not made the head of the tribes of Israel, and the Lord anointed you king nope. of Israel? Notice he said, When you were little in your own sight. So remember, when he asked him, Man, don't you know? Samuel asked him, like, Don't you know, man, the desire of all of Israel is you, like you the man around these parts. These people want you. Don't you know that? And you remember his response was, me? Like, I'm from Benjamin. Benjamin is like the smallest of all the tribes. And then my family is like nobody's. And then within my family, I'm a nobody. You know what I'm saying? So he's asking them, don't you know at that point, when you felt like that about yourself, that's when you was exalted? But now you so high and mighty, it's like, oh, God tell you to do something. You know what, God? I got a better idea. You know what I'm saying? Let's see. Keep going. And Samuel said, when you were little in your own sight, was you, were you not made the head of the tribes of Israel and the Lord anointed you king over Israel? Mm -hmm. And the Lord sent you on a journey and said, go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Malachites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Mm -hmm. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord, but did fly upon the spoil and did evil in the sight of the Lord? Mm -hmm. And Saul said to Samuel, yea. I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the Lord sent me, mm -hmm. and have brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. Mm -hmm. But the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice unto the to the Lord thy God in Israel, mm -hmm. meaning Gilgal. And Samuel said, As the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as uh -huh. in obeying the voice of the Lord. He said, All I want you to do is obey. What are you going to make a sacrifice for if you, if you obey? Why well, I need a sacrifice? Do I have a delight in sacrifice and burnt office, offering the same way that I have a, 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 a delight in uh, obeying? What verse is that? 22. Right? Grab uh, Hebrews chapter 13. We're going to come back here. But uh, Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 14. Because you look at the theme, this is two back-to-back -back situations, right? He was commanded, go to Gilgal. After you go to Gilgal, wait until Samuel gets there. So I went to Gilgal. He waited seven days. People start to scatter. War is about to come. He's like, all right, let me make this sacrifice. Because he felt like the sacrifice would fix it, right? So then we read over in Michael. Michael tells us, man, he ain't worried about no sacrifice. You know what I require? Just do what I tell you to do. Saul so get mad. I mean, Samuel get mad at him. Like, nah, man, that's not how it's supposed to go. Now the kingdom ripped from you. Okay, cool. He still remains king in the physical, right? We go over to chapter 15, same type of situation. He tell him, kill all of them. Don't take any of the spoil. You get, get rid of the animals, get rid of everything. Don't take nothing. Kill it all. All of a sudden, they keep the spoils. They keep the animals. They keep all the good stuff, right? And then they say, we going to sacrifice it. That's the reason why we kept it, because we want to sacrifice to God. Is that what he asked you for? No, I didn't ask you for that. So that's why, that's why Samuel asked him a question. Do I want sacrifice or do I want obedience? Like, is it, which one is it? Right? This is Hebrew chapter 13. Let's hear about it. Hebrew chapter 13, verse 14, actually. For, the, for, here, we have, for here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Mm-hmm. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to the God. The what? Sacrifice of praise to God continually. The sacrifice of what? Praise to God continually. Mm. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. So giving thanks to his name and praising God, that's a sacrifice. Okay. Let's go to uh, Psalm. Psalm chapter 51. It's Psalm chapter 51. Let me show y'all how this is the exact same thing people do today. It's Psalm chapter 51. Give me verse uh, 47. Psalm chapter 51, verse 14. Sorry. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God. Mm hmm Thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. Mm -hmm. O Lord, open thou, lip, open thou my lips, 
and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. Mm -hmm. For thou desire not sacrifice. He said, you don't want sacrifice. What do you desire? Or else would I give it? Uh huh. You delight not in burnt offering. Uh huh. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. He said, the sacrifices of God are what? A broken spirit. A broken spirit. And a contrite heart. And a contrite heart. So that's two things we can look at for sacrifices. We can look at brokenness. That's a sacrifice to God. And praising God. Being thankful, thanking God, that's a sacrifice to God, right? That's our modern day sacrifices. We don't have a, we don't have a, the burnt offering, we don't have an altar and all that. So our modern day sacrifice is brokenness and thanking God, praising God. So now we put ourselves into today and we go into one of these churches and what do you have? You have a lot of brokenness and you have a lot of praising God. Matter of fact, you step into one of these churches and you got what they're going to start off with. A whole bunch of praising God. Right? They're going to have a whole choir. Everybody's going to be singing, being thankful to God and all that. That's good. All that's good. But that's no different from what Saul is doing. If we don't obey, that's no different from what Saul is doing. Most like God didn't ask you for that. He asked you to do what he said. You praising him and you feel, oh my God, man, I'm just so sad that this happened. And beating up on yourself a whole bunch of stuff. All that's great. I understand. I get it. But all I ask you to do is to do what I told you to do. That's why when the people were sitting there and they're talking to Samuel, they're like, man, oh, we've added on to our sin. We already been sinners. Now we added on to all our sins, us asking for a king. Samuel didn't wait and play with them about that. So I ain't got time to be talking to y'all about that. So I'm telling you, you sin, you acknowledge you sin. Just don't turn away from the word. Keep doing what the man say. Don't waste your time talking about all that stuff. Who cares? Now, do what he say. Right? That's all he asked for. Do what the man say. Only, the only way you're going to do what he says is if you learn it. The only way you're going to learn it is you open up the book or you learn it from somebody who already opened up the book. Let's go back. This is 1 Samuel chapter 15. 1 Samuel chapter 15. We love off verse 22. And Samuel said, As the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices... As in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. Mm -hmm. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as the iniquity of idolatry. I got that. Because you have rejected the word of the, the, word of the Lord, he has also rejected you from being king. That's, that's done. All right, that's it. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord mm -hmm. in thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Mm -hmm. Now, therefore, I pray thee, pardon my sin and turn again with me that I may worship the Lord. Uh -huh. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee, for you have rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord has rejected you from being king over Israel. I got that. And as Samuel turned about to go away, he laid upon the skirt of his mantle and it rent. And Samuel said unto him, the Lord has rent the kingdom of Israel from you this day and has given it to a neighbor of yours that is better than you. Mm -hmm. And also the strength of Israel will not lie nor repent. For he is not a man that he should repent. Then he said, I have sinned, yet honor me now, I pray thee, before the elders of my people and before Israel, and turn again with me that I may worship the Lord my God. Mm -hmm. So Samuel turned again after Saul, and Saul worshiped the Lord. Mm -hmm. Then said Samuel, Bring you here to me Agag, the king of the Amalekites. Mm -hmm. And Agag came unto him delicately. And Agag said, Surely the bitterness of death is past. Uh -huh. And Samuel said, As thy word has made men, women childless, so shall thy mother be childless among women. And Samuel hewed Agag in pieces before the Lord in Gilgal. Samuel killed him, just like Saul was supposed to do. Samuel said, Nah, let me finish this job. You know what I'm saying? I got a job to do. I'm going to do it the most I got to tell me to do. Right? And just go ahead and finish him off. Right? This is, a uh, what is this? Where are we going? Let's go to Matthew chapter 7. Let's do Matthew chapter 7. Let's do Mark, actually. Let's do Mark chapter 7. No, Matthew chapter 7, sorry. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Is Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Uh -huh. But he that does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. 
Mm -hmm. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Uh-huh. It's all prophesied. And Keep in going. thy name have cast out devils, uh -huh. and in thy name done many wonderful works. Mm -hmm. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you work, ye that work iniquity. So no matter what we go through, no matter what our experience is, no matter how special it is to us, no matter how much we look at it and be like, you know, this is real. Because Saul could have Saul could have went through all those things, and this is the book. It's not. It's not somebody like what we go through. I'm telling you, it's like yeah. Well, I saw a vision last night. Right? And I could be wrong as all outdoors about my vision. This is not that. This is the book. This is God himself authorizing and saying, you know what? The spirit of God really fell on Saul. And Saul was really a new man. And Saul really had a new heart. And Saul really prophesied. All those things really happened to Saul. And at the end of the day, the man was rejected. Right? At the end of the day, that thing was done. The man was rejected. So we got to look at that for ourselves at the same time, right? We have to be able to look at it like, okay, well, I had some pretty nice experiences. I feel like God really moved in my life. I feel like God really did this or that for me. But at the end of the day, if Saul could have been rejected based off of his real experiences, what makes you think that our maybe experiences won't have lead us to being rejected? We got to put ourselves in a position where we can win. And the only way we can win is if we know the book. We know how God works. We know what he requires of us. Right? Once you know what the man requires, then you know, then you can work. Now you know what to do. Right? So let's see what the man requires. This is Mark chapter 7. You don't know what the man requires. You're just going to be walking up. You're going to be prophesying in his name, casting out demons, doing many wonderful works, walking up to the man talking about, Lord, Lord. Man gonna be like, man, I never knew you. Depart from me. And then he's gonna call you a worker of what? I thought you said Matthew. I did say Matthew. We already read Matthew, boy. If you had your book, you know what I'm saying? You can probably keep up. Where your book at? Uh -huh. Man, you gotta grab one of them books over there. That way you can follow along. How you gonna learn a book you ain't opening up and reading it? You can learn it without reading it. You can't. You know what I'm saying? But you a man though, you know what I'm saying? You ought to wanna read it. You ain't a man, but you gonna be a man one day. You know what I'm saying? You ought to want to read it. You know, look at that thing, you know what I'm saying? Be able to internalize it. Then one day you teach it, you know what I'm saying? Or if you don't teach it, you can lead people to learning it. You know what I'm saying? Try to help people out. That's what it's about. Gotta keep everything straight. You know what I'm saying? You gotta be a girl, you gotta grow up, be a man, you gotta have a little family of your own. You know what I'm saying? You gotta have to take care of a woman, take care of some kids. You already got enough experience taking care of these kids, you know what I'm talking about? Then it's another that's a whole other job. You know what I'm saying? You gotta get a job. You know what I'm saying? You gotta put food on the table, make sure everybody alright. You know what I'm saying? You, can you imagine? Let me tell you, you get you get you a wife, you know what I'm saying? Wife be unstable sometimes. Then you gotta be able to compensate for that and be like, okay, you know what? Listen, it's gonna be okay. Everybody relax. The kids tripping. You know what I'm saying? Kids like all the kids always got different problems. You know what I'm saying? You gotta be a man to be able to know, you know what? I gotta handle these situations with wisdom. Because everything in life is super delicate. Everything is delicate. I mean you touch it and it just ripple effects into something else. Then you touch that and that ripple affects in something. So you got to be able to be like, okay, you know what? I'm wise enough to know I only touch here, I only touch here, and I stay away from there. All right? Only way you learn that type of wisdom is the book. You can learn other types of wisdom in this world, and that stuff had you all messed up and confused. You know what I'm saying? Going back, looking back with great and stuff. You know what I'm saying? But you learn the wisdom from the book, that thing had you right. You know what I'm saying? You'd be better than, you know what I'm saying, any of us. Right, you start at your age, you'll be better than any of us because now, now you you skip some of the, so much of the stuff we is in. We still we deal with stuff today from our past. Right, it's little mistakes that we didn't made in our past that haunt us to this day. Right, you avoid all that stuff, then you put yourself in a position where you ain't haunted by that stuff. You can think more clearly, you can see more straight. All right, that's what we got. This is uh, what is it? Mark seven. This is Mark chapter seven. Give me verse twenty one or twenty. In Mark chapter 7, verse 20. Let's see what come out of the heart of a man. And he said, that which comes out of the man, that defiles the man. Right? You know what this is talking about when he said, that which comes out of a man, that is what defiles a man. Right? That's what makes a man unclean. That's what makes a man rejected. The actions. Right? The actions. Right? He's going to tell you there's thoughts. Right? It's thoughts. These are evil thoughts that are inside a man. When these evil thoughts become actions, that's what defiles a man. Right? That's what lets you know. It's a diagnosis. You ever been to the doctor before? 
What happened when you went to the doctor? Why you go to the doctor? Because you're sick? Why you go to the doctor? There's a checkup, they tell you anything was wrong with you, or they're like, nah, you good. They said, um, I had to get one shot. You had to get a shot? Wasn't nothing wrong with you, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you go to the doctor, right? You go to the doctor, you walk up in there, and you feel an eye. You know what I'm saying? Everything feel A-OK -okay to you. They get to the pulling out that light. You ever seen that light they got? They tell you, stick out your tongue. They put a little, the little wooden stick on there. They do that thing in your ear, too. They looking like that. So they doing all this stuff and looking at all this stuff. And you looking like, all right, whatever. You feel just OK. You get up. They come up with that, that clipboard. Like, all right, yeah, what time can I leave? And they got that clipboard, and they say, OK, well, Actually, you have this, that, and the other. And you might want to get this checked out. And we might need to do a follow-up test about this. This, that, and that. That's what the doctor, when you get older, you're good now. Your body's so darn healthy. But when you get older, that's the type of stuff that happened. They have to tell you, well, it's this and this and this. And you're looking like, I didn't feel none of that. I didn't see none of that. But you know, the doctor, what they train to do is they train to look at what's coming out of your body. Right? If you have certain things happening on your body, the doctor is trained to say, Oh, if this is happening on the inside, this is happening. You can't see it. The doctor can't even see it. But he's trained to look at the signs. That's the same thing that we have to be trained in when it comes to the book. The book is trying to teach us. The book is saying, these are the signs. You want to know if you're a wicked person? You want to know if you're going to hell? This is the signs. Your heart is good if these things are not happening. But if you sin it, then these are the things that are going to be coming out of you. And this is how you know your heart is not good. Right? Watch this. This is uh, Mark chapter 7, verse 20. And he said, that which comes out of the man, that defiles the man. Uh-huh. From, from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. Evil thoughts. Adulteries. So these are the evil thoughts, right? These are evil thoughts. Adulteries. Fornication. Fornication. Murders. Murders. Theft. Theft. Covetousness. Covetousness. Wickedness. Wickedness. Deceit. Deceit, lasciviousness, lasciviousness, an evil eye, an evil eye, blasphemy, blasphemy, pride, pride, foolishness, foolishness, and all these evil things come from within and defile the man. Right? So those are the things. It all starts with a thought. If that thought develops, right? We deal with thoughts. Thoughts, you can have a thought, right? A thought can be there. You slap that thing down. But if that thing develops and becomes something that you dwell on or becomes an action, well then now that's a problem. Right? And that's when it's a sign. That's for you. It's not the end of the world. It's for you. It's for you. That's the most high God diagnosed. He's trying to tell you, oh, that's a sign that something's wrong in your heart. So now what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to take the signs of the most high God. You're supposed to look at that and you say, okay, I need to correct something. I need to change something. Let me get up. Let me change my environment. Let me do something different. Right? So when you you in school, when you play with your friends and all these different things, those are the type of things you're supposed to look at. When the books say blaspheme, you know what that means? That, what, what that relate to? No. Cussing. That relates to cussing. That relates to calling people out their name. You know what I'm saying? Disrespecting people. All that type of stuff. That all falls under blasphemy. Right? You Most people think of blasphemy. You think about it like blasphemy to God. Right? So all that falls under blasphemy. Right? So you look at these things. Let's say, you know what I'm saying? You hear you know what I'm saying? some of your friends, you know what I'm saying, acting up. You got to be able to look at it and be like, no, that's a sign. That they heart ain't right. And then let's say you mess around, you slip up. You know what I'm saying? You hang out with them all the time. It's that, and oh, pink. And then you say your cuss word. And it's like, you have to stop yourself and be like, okay, wait a minute. That's the sign that now my heart ain't right. Now let me change my environment. Let me get new friends. Let me stop hanging out with these friends. Let me do something else. Because it's about your soul. Your soul got to make it, right? That has to be all of our mindset. Our soul got to make it, right? Keep going. And from there he arose and went to the borders of Tyre and Sidon and entered into a house and would have no man know it, but he could not be hid. This is, uh, go to, uh, uh, 1 Samuel 15, where we leave off? 20, 30, 30, 22. We leave off at 22? No, no, like 20, like 30, like 32. 32. All right, let's go back to 32. Let's finish this chapter out. It's 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 34. 
Then Samuel went up to Ramah, and Saul went up to his house to Gilgal, I mean to Gibeah of Saul. And Samuel came no more to see Saul until the day of his death. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, Samuel mourned for Saul, and the Lord repented that he had made Saul king over Israel. Mm -hmm. That's the end of the chapter. So now we see Saul in the physical, right? Technically, Saul is still king. But in terms of in the spiritual, most High God already moved on. All right? And that's exactly how it is for us, too. In the physical, it might look like some things still happening, right? Everything looked good. But in the spiritual, most High God had moved on like, your butt done, you just don't see it yet. You know what I'm saying? That thing might not happen for three, four years. Your butt already been done. You know what I'm saying? Most High God moved on, he going to the next man. To the next woman, to the next thing, you know what I'm saying? Next kid, you know what I'm saying? Whoever it is, right? So that's why we got to be attentive. But just know, as long as it's breath, you know what I'm saying? It's always a chance. Most I got, we got to have to grab. Before we get out here, grab uh, grab what I want. First, First John two. It's First John chapter two. Sometimes these Christians be misunderstanding, you know what I'm saying? Tell them to turn away from sin, no sin, just not once. You know what I'm saying? You sin at all, you don't know God, you're a sinner, and you're done, you better go to hell. They kind of look at that like, oh, so you trying to say, if I sin, I'm just doomed. That's not what I said. All right? Not what I said. It's 1 John chapter 2, verse 1. My little brother, my little children. These things write out to you that ye said not. Whole point of what I'm saying is that you don't sin, right? But if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Yahushua the righteous. Mm -hmm. And he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. That's everybody. As long as you breathing, the whole point of this is that your butt don't sin. If you do sin, you will sin. Go ahead, keep going. Watch this. I ain't got to say it. He'll tell you the whole thing. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. <laughs> if you keep his commandments, that's how we know we know him. What happened next? He that says I know him and keep not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. That got that. You, you're you not telling the truth if you say you know him but you don't keep the commandments. You don't do what the man say, you don't know the man. That's out of the book mouth. That ain't my mouth. But he also just told you the whole point of this is that you don't see him. Right? But if you do, we got to have to get that's what the fire. Right? And that's the hope that we got to keep. As long as we breathe it. Got to stop hypocriting. Got to stop changing. I mean, just switching up and do what the most I got to say. That's it. It's only one way to go. Right? Only one way to go for us. Otherwise, just a certain doom. Right? And the fear, what the book say? A fearful expectation? Mm -hmm. There's a fearful expectation. Right? The wrath among the children of disobedience. Any questions? Let's pray out.